Mike, obviously. I mean, uh, former World Series MVP at third <laughs> base. 16 games he's played there, and he's he's had four errors. So, so what is key for this guy developing into being a really good everyday third baseman? Well, Fran, first of all, you know, this is a very athletic guy. They've moved him around. He's played a lot of games in center field, a handful at shortstop. So let's take a look at how the Cubs have been using him throughout the season because he is a young guy. He's an electric athlete, and I think he does have the ability to play third base. We see him here in center field, and, you know, kind of fighting the sun, a little bit of the wind that could be trouble in Wrigley Field, and he does an okay job. He's very capable. At shortstop in this play, bobbles the ball. You see he still has the arm strength to make that throw. So now we're moving him over to third base. Here, this is this is actually a routine bunt. You see him throw the ball wide, but I think there's mechanical things that can be fixed, especially when someone is such a good athlete. If we can just pause right here as we take about two clicks forward, I want everyone to take a look at his lead arm, the glove hand. You see how that glove almost falls to the side, and what that does, it actually opens up your front side, which, uh, which sometimes makes that throw either sail way right or you compensate by really closing off your top half and you it ends up going left in this situation if we keep running it it's left of the first baseman the ball goes into right field so I, I said well who, who can I compare to and what plays when we look at Matt Chapman this is a this is a tremendous double play we got to rewind that and, okay we'll take this let's stop here please rewind to where, right before he feels the ball when you see Matt Chapman coming in one thing I want you to notice although his weight is going in one direction his front shoulder is in a direct line to his target, in this case, second base. The second thing that, that I want everyone to look at is look at where his glove is when he's making the throw. He's almost like a pitcher that tucks in. We can roll it. See, momentum going towards first, lead shoulder going towards second. When he releases, that glove stays close to his chest the whole time, throws a strike to Kevin Biggio, and they complete the double play. Here we are, one of the other elite third basemen in the game. Nolan Arenado. This, this ball makes him go way to his right, going into the third base dugout. If we take a look from this angle, look how close that top side is. That front arm, that glove never really falls coming down. He keeps himself compact and in a straight line from an upper body standpoint towards his target. Now, he has tremendous arm strength. Paul Goldschmidt actually makes him look real nice with that. But this is, this is the one player I wanted to take a good look at. Okay, let's rewind that. This is a harmless, routine, two-hop ground ball to a third baseman, but I want everyone to see how polished he is in his fundamentals. This is an out 100 out of 100 times. He fields it on a good hop, takes his time. He knows he has plenty of time, sets his feet, takes one, two, three, four throws, and then look at the top angle there, how he tucks that arm. Everything is so compact, going right towards his target, which is first base. Makes an easy throw, probably was the 50% throw, Make the routine play a routine out is what I love to tell my son who's in high school and all the infielders there. So this reminds me of a guy who was a guy that was at third base and was an impact offensive player. They were moving him around a little, and it was Miguel Andujar. We took a look at him a few years ago, and he was struggling at third base. And when I was looking at this, I was like, wow, look at, look at the difference. Let's look at elite Nolan Arenado on the right-hand side of your screen and Andujar. That's a nice play by Andujar. He makes a tough, a tough backhanded ball on an in-between hop. <clears throat> Excuse me. Look at the difference when these guys release. Look how tucked in and closed Arenado is, and look how the top, the, the upper half of Andujar's body just flies open because that front arm gets real lazy. So, as we come back here into Studio 42, I actually spoke to Mariners infield guy uh, Perry Hill, who we all affectionately call Bone. He was my infield instructor with the uh, Florida Marlins, and what I loved about him was, first of all, the difference in adjusting to third base, and it's a game of angles. Um, we'll touch on that a little later, but when, with regards to the throw, I think it's so huge when you make a routine play, your upper half, especially that lead left shoulder for a right-handed thrower, has to be in a direct line towards your target. In this case first, if I'm turning a double play, I wanna field it here, but I wanna be direct towards my target at second base. When you see these incredible plays like what Matt Chapman and Nolan Arenado are doing, Chapman comes in here, fields the ball off balance. Although his weight is going towards his right into that third base dugout, this shoulder is still tucked in a position. So when he makes the throw, he kind of keeps everything tucked in here. He's not flying open, because when you fly open, you do one of two things. You, your, your arm is either gonna be late, and then it's gonna sail arm side, 
or because your arm is late, you're going to compensate with your top half and try to bring it over, which you can get, you know, you throw that ball almost like a cutter going to your target. So when it comes to Christopher Morrell, I think reps is the key thing, Dan. You know, this is a guy who they're not putting him at third base because they don't think he can handle it. They're putting him at third base because they think he can be ultra valuable to that team. Okay, two questions for you. One, you talked about reps, but before that question, how hard is it when the young man's playing shortstop and center field, especially the outfield with a different arm stroke than coming over and trying to get that slot down at third base? Well, I'll answer it two ways, Dan. First, personally, I played the middle my whole life. I never played third base until I signed a pro contract. I felt like I was in no man's land because the middle was very, I could play the ball. Third base became a very reactionary position. And it, and it is different. I learned the angles. Perry Hill was big on we play angles 45 to put ourselves in a good position. Now, Christopher Morrell is trying to make this adjustment at the big league level. So first of all, I was playing in front of 400 fans in A ball and double A. I didn't have that pressure. This kid is playing in front of, you know, the big lights and, and the bright lights and the big screen. So for him, I think there are two different throws. From the outfield, you do have a chance to wind up and really get out there. And you do see he gets a little long. In that article that we saw, they're trying to shore that up. I think the biggest key for someone like him would be his lower half. Once you get the base and you feel that ball, I think I, I noticed it during my career when, you know, August, September, my arm wasn't feeling as good. I had to really focus on my base to be able to put myself in that position because then it's almost like a combination of how we teach pitchers and catchers. You know, the pitcher comes here, we want him to tuck, but we want the catcher to throw quick out of his ear. I think that at third base, someone who is athletic as, as Morell is and has the arm strength and has that ability can field that ball. Good base, you tuck, but you're still short. Is it, it hard to change that arm stroke though, Mike? I, I think it's a case by case thing. You know, one thing Perry Hill told me was the best thing that happened to me as a third base was that I played the middle my whole life. He said, because now you can throw to here, turning a double play, fielding, uh, you know, slow rollers or bunts to throw to first. It became natural for me but I had to focus on my, on, on my lower half. So let me ask you this question then, because again, Perry Hill, great infield instructor. Nolan Arenado was that, not that third baseman when he came into the Rocky system. When you talk about reps, I just believe that if a, if a player has a strong desire and with excellent teachers, which is what coaches are, and you, but you have to work out that craft day in and day out. You constantly have to be out there early fielding your ground balls and getting your rhythm down to the ball, don't you? Absolutely, and that's when, you know, I asked you off, off, off screen, was he always that good? He came up in the Rocky system, and you told me no, he was a work in progress. So a lot of guys, it, we see the end product because we see all the highlights, but you don't always see all the time they, they, they put in to make their craft. And that's daily, isn't it, Mike? You I got, think it has to be. I mean, I don't think you have to take 200 ground balls every day, but I think you have to go through your routine where it can't get stale on you because – just like anything else, I think you start to develop bad habits, and then it can, snow, it can snowball on you. When, when your arm starts dragging, you're going to try to make an adjustment with your bottom half, and then now you're thinking of three different things instead of really playing the ball and doing it. But to your point, Dan, you know, Mike Redman, who's Buddy Black's bench coach in Colorado, I asked him when he took over, you know, this first year, I go, hey, how is Charlie Blackman? How's Nolan Arenado? And he goes, you know, of all things, he's so good but he works hard every day defensively. And I appreciate guys like that. They'll, those guys earn the gold gloves. They earn the platinum gloves and all the accolades they get because, yes, they've been blessed with great athletic ability, but they keep working on it day in, day out. And I think you have to appreciate that as a fan.